Hello, my friends. Uh, lighting. Okay, I'm back on the little uh, home light saw. And now I'm testing the tank. We're going to just stick this on a rag. So what happens is, is my, is my theory, is there's, we use this port here to pressure up the, uh, more light! We use this little port right here to pressure up the entire crankcase when we did the crankcase seal check and they were good. So now what's going on is there's, when this is running, there's a pressure coming out of here, out of this little port right there. And it goes chain bar oiling tank. And this, we'll just say that that, this is the hose that came off of there. It's going back to my pump again. Thank you, Ken. So these little tanks pressure up, right? So let's just see what we got. It's not pressuring up. I'm pressuring up the wrong hole. That's why. <laughs> That's a common mistake. Okay. So these pressure up like, what kind of a thing does it? I guess a compressor tank or anything. So we should get oil squirting out of here. There it is. Perfect, eh? Okay, interesting stuff, guys. I didn't expect to get into this today. But I, I'm trying to figure out how this automatic oiler works. And this is the pump right here for it. So this, this there's, there's actually one, two, three, one, two, three holes. There's one right in there where that pin goes for this diaphragm. Hopefully you can see that. It goes in there like that. There's one that comes from the crank share, the crank case, which is a pulse line. Watch this. Okay, I'm not using too much air there. And uh, there's a third line right in the center that's connected to this line, which I think is the output. And that was plugged. So I'm not sure which is the in and which is the out. But now I know what it does. Uh, these are both for the chain oil. I'm going to get this back together without wrecking anything, we hope. That's pretty cool stuff. Okay. Everything's clean now. This spring sits on here precariously. And I believe then all we got to do is put this cover on. But we need to compress the spring all at the same time. So we're going to use this flat knife. We're going to put our piece in here. Pull our knife out. Well, you should be able to see, yes, we got some spring action there. And we're going to put this back together again, and we're not taking it apart again. So that is really, really cool. I had to take that apart, you guys. I, I, uh, I didn't know how this pump worked, but it works on an impulse right from the crankcase, eh? Good. That's as far as I'm going to go today. I'm going to clean up. So really all I got done today was the, uh, the rebuild of the carburetor, which was disappointing because it uh, doesn't hold back air with my uh, small mighty vac. But Donnie Boy 73 says that you don't have to. They, uh, so a lot of two-stroke carburetors will leak. It will leak air pressure, but not liquid pressure. Isn't that cool? So this is an oil pump. So the one that pulses air will be the output. That one. 
That one pulses there. I gotta give a shout out to. Oh, hang on. Leon's Chainsaw Parts and Repair. I was for sure certain that the oil tank, I cleaned it out, dumped the oil, the oil was still good. It had the little oil filter in the bottom, that's the factory one. And that was it. So, and I pulled out a bunch of, this is from both chainsaws. They're all, there's nothing in these, I, I put a wire through every one. And I went on his, his uh, YouTube uh, video, excuse me, and uh, he said that there, most of the time, the little tiny little duck bill, which is there, and that doesn't let the air back out so that the, so that the, uh, it goes in kind of like that, but from the inside, uh, that doesn't let the air out so that you can pressure up the tank and the pressure, the, the air pressure in the tank from the pulse line in the cart crankcase pressures up the lines and oils the chain, if you can imagine that. And he said that this, if, if the white, if, if you pull this and this just falls off, there will be this inside there, and he was right. But that was on a, there's two holes. One, two. So this was still on a, on a hose line. And I didn't hear this. I wiggled it and jiggled it, and, and he said to put some solvent down here, close these lines, and shake the heck out of it, and you should get the brass and the duck bill out. Now, can you believe it? It came out. I, it must have been stuck inside with some old, old goo or something. So, thank you, Leons. And on the storage box, you know the red container that these things sit in, on his, on Steve's, there was no, absolutely no oil floating in the bottom of those things. And these things spew out oil even when they're shut off. So, thank you. And in, on a mine, unfortunately, all I got was the brass piece. But don't laugh. This brass piece is like 20 bucks. But I don't have the duck bill. Good day, my friends. Bruce here. Well, today we're going to uh, just get a little bit further into the duck bill valves. These ones finally came in the mail. So I'm going to open them up. Oh, they're cute! Okay. They're kind of like the original one you that we uh, installed into Steve's saw. I'll just hold one up. There, that is a duckbill valve. Isn't that something? But now that we have them here, uh, we're going to do two things. I'm going to I'm going to wire out my chainsaw with with the duckbill valves, just like Steve's was, and uh, then we're going to replace his with the proper ones. So just give me a minute to get organized. I'm going to blow some of the sawdust out of mine. You can still see there's a little bit of sawdust in there. Okay, mostly down in there, and I'll be right back. Okay, first thing we have to do is to snip the tie-on line like this. this. These are the old lines from, from both saws. They're all shrunk and they slip through so easily that the, the holes that you can see uh, right here and here, they leak. This is the oil tank that provides chain lubricating oil to the chain. So I'm not going to dilly-dally, we're just going to do this. Maybe. <laughs> and I just have the lightest film of lubricant on here too. Eh? Uh, this one's going to be for the duckbill valve. So why am I having trouble now when I did Steve so easily? So I did say this was my saw, right? Okay, here we go. Oh, no. Good. Oh, 
there we go. Now, I'm going to cut this square. Okay. We're going to put this, let's just heat it up a little bit. Life gets so much easier when you warm up this Tigon stuff. There it is. It's getting soft now. Good. And we'll slip that on there like that. Oop, it's almost too warmy. Yes, it is. Good. And then we take our duck valve, duck bill valve. And like you saw, or will see in this video, this will allow the pump from one of these uh, outputs to pressurize the tank. I'm just going to just put this right together here. Might as well, eh? Like that. And I blow it, the air should come out of there. When I suck on it, there should be nothing. I shouldn't be able to pull air from it. So the pressure from the uh, impulse from the tank will pressurize this oil tank. I'm just being super careful, guys. Heat this up a little bit. Ooh, I got it a little too hot again. Darn it. Good. Now we're gonna put we're gonna put the filter, this is the oil filter, and it goes on to the it goes on to that tank as well. I should have done that this one first. Yes, you can. Nope. I'm going to cut that at more of an angle. Okay, that should do it. Oh, let's take a little measurement right to the end, too. So we kind of want it to be in the tank about that far. I've done this twice and I still am shaky. There. Okay. Let's get this in here. Okay, I should be able to grab that with some uh, Team stop. Can I grab that devil? That's right there. I should be able to shove it in a little bit further than that. And then I should be able to grab the end of that with these. There we go. Good. All right. Now I'm going to pull it up to that right line I made with the felt pin. There we go. And that maybe a little bit more. Always a little bit more, right? Cut this off flush. And put our filter on there. Right. Maybe this line is a little stiffer than my last line too, eh? Okay, 
and that should we should be able to feed that just down in there like like the real world and everything. Darn it. There we are. I can feel it right down the bottom. Now this one came off. Perfect. We're good with that length. Now we're going to mount our oil tank. Right there. We shorten that just a tiny, tiny bit. Oh, that's a nicer line all right. You guys still with me? Good. And then this one I believe comes up and over. And we plug that in like that. Good. And then we have one more coming out of coming out of there. And it goes to here, underneath the carburetor. And this carburetor sits on here, just like that. So let's get some line on here. This is the output of the oil pump to the chain oil hole. Once I get this on, we're done this part of the video. This comes down and around, around the carburetor. And into there. So I would think, let's just do one small thing. Where's all the parts and pieces, baby? So this carburetor's not completely built yet, but I think it goes on like that. Yeah, that's why I'm glad I mounted this. Good. And then this kind of goes around the bottom of the carburetor. And then onto there like that. Let me I'll just leave a little bit of slack on that in case I have to make it. I can make it shorter, but I can't make it longer. And that last little bit of tubing is for the tank. So this is just a pretty sophisticated oiling system, right? But, it works. Good. You ready? This is the gas tank now, right? Uh, we got two. This one goes into here. Perfect. Now why was that one so easy? Oh, this is a different line. Same dimension, just a softer line, right? Okay. And we'll put the air filter on there. Or a gas filter, excuse me. Pull that back, shove that in. There, that's lots of gas line in there now. It's right down to the corner. And we hook that up to the carburetor. But I'm just gonna cut 
this one right now. We'll cut it a tad long. Because this carburetor hasn't got the diaphragms in it yet. Perfect. Chain oil. Gas. I love it. Well, I might as well just poke that on there so we don't lose it. And we need a duck bill. Or, I'm sorry, when the gas tank uses fuel, it drops and we get a vacuum. And then this little guy right here lets air in, but not out. So the tank uh, will uh, let oxygen in. Isn't that sweet? Hi guys. Well, I'm just rotating the engine. This is my, my saw, but it doesn't matter which one. And I'm just rotating the saw, and I'm sucking some oil out of the oil tank for the chain bar oil. And it's just starting to circulate through the system, and you should see it in this hose shortly. I'll, I'll give you a good, good close-up of that. I have to keep this tank out of the way of the flywheel, right? coming yet. Unless that's, yeah, that should be doing it. It's pumping, it should be going. Welcome to Two Strokes 102. Spark plug gap to 25 thousandths. New coil. Visible spark when grounded on block. Compression of 175 to 180 pounds. Rebuilt carburetor. But it's not in the housing of the chainsaw. It's just open. This is the block and this rotating assembly with a flywheel and the coil connected. I can see the spark. I put gas in the cylinder on either chainsaw, this one or this one, and I'm not getting <laughs> I'm not getting any fire. I'm not getting a pop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assemble the saw completely and we're going to see. All right, guys, we're going to assemble this to see if I can get it running assembled. I, I, I don't know. I, I've tried everything I can to get a, a fire to happen inside that cylinder, and it's not happening. So, when you're putting these together, I've done this now so many times, I can actually do it. I think of Leon's, uh, Leon's chainsaw repair. That guy has done it more than me. Okay, so the first thing you have to do is make sure the spark plug wire goes through the hole. Make sure the spark plug's not in. Uh, the next thing you've got to do is kind of shimmy it in a little bit, just a little bit to get her started. And then this is the next key. And you want the throttle to attach to uh, a little further, and I'll show you what I mean. Whoops. And it's, I tell you, this is all, you know, you got to hold your lips just right, eh? Okay, that might do it. There it is. Okay, so right, I'm gonna get you right in there. First you put the, I put the clip in like that. Uh, some guys face the hoop the other way, right there. 
and then just as you're shoving it in, you get the hook into the throttle lever right right this is hard to do because it's hard to do right there see you've got a little bit of throttle there but not enough to really do anything and now you can ease it together both toes crossed right Close, but we're not quite there. Why? Oh, are we caught up on anything? No. Ah. Perfect. And when those two, I'll use that. When those two holes right there. Line up. You're home free. back off. So we got a gas tank hooked up, we got the oil tank hooked up, we're almost home free on the centering of the machine. We've got a spark plug that might wire that might be too long but we're gonna have to deal with that when we get there. I might just rig that on. Okay, good. Either plug's gapped at 25 thousandths for both machines. There it is. Oh, I have not brought a spark. Oh no, that's not right. This is the right spark plug wrench right here. And now that has to go on there somehow, right? Eh? You see that? How it's too long? But we might be able to just unplug this for a minute. We might be able to bring some of that slack back into the into the chainsaw. Let's just put that on from underneath. Good. Let's just, now I don't know how much length we have but I'm going to use the longer screws in the top because that is how I think it should go together. Whoop. Good. Now this goes on I think and then the handle afterwards or all at the same time. Good. I got a lot of hours into this saw. But Steve's a friend. Are you ready? I'm going to start a new video here. I, mean, I, I, just, I need to take a break and I'll come back. I never changed a thing. It's only been a few minutes, but I just wanted to break uh, for when I'm editing so I know where to start and where to stop. Nothing's changed here, guys. So you guys tell me, because I need to know, why couldn't I get that to happen when it was sitting in that vise? Is there shielding? Is there something? 